Hey everybody, I'm going to show you something completely bonkers tonight. Um, it's the ability to run DAX within Power Query. And I had no idea this was even possible until five days ago. And it wasn't until earlier today that I found out it actually would work. Um, and so this, this came out of a great discussion I've been having um, all this week with Christine Payton. And um, we've been back and forth on a lot of different issues about the BIM files and um, data models and prompting AI. And she did a great video following one of those discussions um, two days ago about pulling that information back into Power Query and using it as kind of a single source of truth for your stakeholders about the, um, the your measures and um, your column definitions and all that stuff. And so in that discussion, um, Peter Kravonik, um told us about a function that is so poorly documented. It's not even documented in, it, it's in um, Rick DeGroote's um, Power Query How, but it's very sketchy even there. And, and that is the best source of documentation about him. So this is this is really buried treasure. Um, if it's not if it's not in Power Query how in detail, um, you know it. This is buried deep. And so, shout out to Peter um, for really uncovering this. I had no idea this existed. And so, the first thing I want to talk about is why you would want to do this. This is not just a we're doing it because we can. Um, there, there's a good reason to do this. And the best reason I think is. There are 59 information functions. Um, these are relatively new within DAX, and um, there's a lot of good stuff in here. that You can run these, you can get info about your measures, info about your model, um, info about columns, uh, column statistics. Um, and a lot of these are retrievable through what Christine did, which is basically pulling the um, the DB schema and the TM schema information. And um, that's also something you can do within DAX Studio. The thing you can't do though within DAX is, first of all, not everything in the, in the info um, measures is, um, is represented in the, the schema information. That's one thing. And the other thing is, even for the stuff that is, um, you can't pull that via DAX. And so you can, you can look at it via a DAX query, but there's no actual way that I've seen to save it. Um, I tried wrapping it in a 2JSON file or a 2CSV. I tried to write back through, um, through Python in Power Query, and nothing works that, um, it's only really kind of there temporarily in in the DAX queries. And so one of the things I've been you know really grappling with is is there a way we can we can make this more permanent? We can pull this this information and really use it both to prompt AI and um, for documentation purposes. Okay, so now we've talked about why we wanna we want to do this. Um, let's talk about how to do it. And um, it's really pretty straightforward once you um, once you get the the function down that, that does this. And again, this is this is information we got from Peter. And um, shout out to him because this is really poorly documented. But basically, what I did is I did the same thing that Christine did, which is I I parameterized the function so that you enter workspace name and semantic model. And um, the nice thing about that is with those two parameters you can now generalize the function to basically pull any any query or measure from any workspace and any semantic model in your um, in your service so um, let's take a look at um, you know at the function and then the results so here's the the info.measures and it's basically analysis services database and it's the it's the Power Query API address, and then concatenate it with the workspace name from the parameter. Then it loads the semantic model name, and then it um, it has a nullable record that includes the the DAX query, and then this implementation 2.0, which I checked out 
through ChatGPT. And what that says is it's using a, a later implementation of the API form um, in terms of the, uh, the query function that it uses to evaluate. So um, all we have to do is we basically just go, if we want to, let's say we want to do one that's not in the DB or TM schema, um, which would be info query groups. And so what we can do is we can duplicate this and we'll just rename rename the query here to info query groups. And then all we have to do is we just change the the function call here from measures to query groups. Groups. Okay, and the thing that's surprising about this is how fast it is. Watch this. So when, when I hit check, there should be three query groups. I've got staging queries, I've got a group for measure tables, and there's one other group. And so that actually runs quite fast. And so you see that it, it pulls the three, three groups and data model is the other one. And so the other thing that's really cool about this is you can, you can run... Um, Let's do another one, um, which is column statistics, and this is this is one that I um, I talked about three years ago, and it's another very poorly documented um, function that pulls all kinds of descriptive statistics for all the columns in your model, and so all we have to do here is just um, evaluate, change this to column statistics. change the name of the query here. And you can already see it's already, it's already run. Um, and it's, it's all kinds of, um, it, it runs it runs min, it runs max, it runs cardinality, it runs max length. Um, and there's one more thing I want to show you, which is we've been running queries in terms of tables, but you can also run measures. And there's a there's a little cheat here that you can use query. And the way we do it is let's duplicate our query here. And what we're going to do, let's call this one. So I've got, there's a, a, a Welsh t-test I ran that resulted in a table that I has, I, I want to say like six to 10 rows. And um, let's pull the, the, um, the count rows from that. And um, if we go here, um, let's call this num rows. And this one, this one is a little bit more involved, um, just because it's, it's actually kind of a full blown, full blown DAX measure. So what we'll do here is we'll take, and we'll, we'll kind of write this as we would a, a more typical DAX measure. So, um, we'll do evaluate and then we'll do, um, Variable, which is um, numbers, and then this is just a count rows of uh, this table. And now what we'll do is we'll do a return. of that variable. Um, but the one thing we have to note here is that um, you can't return a scalar in a query. And so what we can do is we can put this in curly brackets. And what that'll do is that'll, that'll make it a, a one cell table. And now what we can do is we can just click accept. And there it is. So one cell table returns the, the number of rows. So that's how you can run measures um, in Power Query as well as uh, table queries. So that's um, 
that's really the uh, the long and short of it. But I think it's a really a really valuable thing to be able to do to be able to pull these info functions into into Power Query and potentially also to be able to run measures which you could then use to um, you know, dynamically create tables or you know provide information um, as as Christine said that single source of truth. So um, as I say, I hope you find that helpful. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.